conditions and the starvation diets. The prisoners at these security offices often became ill and many died. The Okensang prison chief testified that more prisoners died there from disease than by execution. At Prang Tachan, Mia Soka and Soi Sen described how prisoners died in the cells in their cells and remained in their shackles for hours and overnight until they were removed. Lauren Saroon described a father and one-year child who died after their desperate hunger led them to eat a live mouse. At S21, a contemporaneous reference in a cadre's notebook, E3833, noted that S21 chief medic, Tree, was afraid of being arrested because too many people were dying there. And in the daily uh, prisoner control reports uh, that were admitted by this chamber uh, last year, uh, including the infamous uh, orange logbook uh, that was obtained from Professor Hainoski, uh, E3 10770. Uh, in those uh, daily reports, uh, the identity of prisoners who died each day at Tool Slang. Uh, at least during some periods, was written in handwriting at the bottom of the daily report. Uh, for example, uh, this report for the 30th of July 1977 notes that Sao Chim, alias Chet Button Bong, Weaving Factory Chairperson, died on account of dysentery and wounds. You may remember this S21 prisoner was the father of civil party Son M, who testified to your honors uh, last year that his father was in good health before his arrest. His father had only been at S21 for one month when he died. And you may remember hearing from Son M uh, that after the arrest of his father and his uncle, who was a, a chief of his own office, Son M was brought to a re-education session led by Nguyen Che and Phnom Penh, uh, at which the accused specifically talked about the arrest of his uncle. In regards to these daily control lists recording the deaths each day by disease, uh, Annex F48, F, as in Frank 48, uh, filed with our trial brief, uh, sets out the daily totals uh, from those documents uh, for the period that we have these documents, which is roughly April to December 1977. And in the 258 days uh, for which there were such records, there were 235 deaths from disease at S21. Though, as you'll also see in the chart, uh, as the conditions worsened at the prison over time, you see the frequency and the number of deaths increasing over time, particularly during the months of October, November, and December 1977. To, to conclude this section on inhumane acts, Your Honor, uh, Chum Say, Chum May, me, and Mr. Chum May uh, summed up the horror uh, faced by prisoners entering S21 in a few simple words uh, back in the 2009 trial. He said, Mr. Co-Prosecutor, when I entered that room and cell, I could not expect that I would survive. At that time, I only lied down on my back, waiting just to be killed. 
Before turning uh, to the crime of torture, I would like to say a few words uh, about uh, Mr. Chum May. In this trial, the Nunche defense has chosen to attack him, to suggest without the slightest basis that Mr. Chum May was not really imprisoned at S21. However, the evidence proving his imprisonment there is beyond dispute. Fellow prisoner Bu Meng, interrogator Park Khan, and prison chief Doi all testified that Chum Mei was at S21. In this photograph of the S21 survivors, you see Chum Mei uh, on the far left, along with Van Nat and Bu Meng and the other survivors. There are multiple prison lists, multiple prison lists identifying him, including this S21 entry list for the 28th of October, 1978. And there is a confession for Chum Mei, dated 8th. November 1978, that was found in the surviving records of this prison. Your Honours, we certainly understand that it is the defense's job and it is a critical one to this court to challenge and test the evidence. But this attack on one of the last remaining survivors of S21 is devoid of any merit. We believe it only serves uh, to highlight the desperation and weakness of the Nunche defense's positions in this case. And with that said, I will now turn to the crime of torture. It has been proven uh, beyond any reasonable doubt, Your Honours, that torture was used to extract confessions from the prisoners at these DK security offices. The evidence from S21 proving the regular use of torture is overwhelming and undeniable. The use of torture was described by the survivors of the prison, some of whom still bear the marks of the severe pain and suffering to which they were subjected. It is admitted by the interrogators at the prison and by the chief of the prison at the very time he was on trial for that crime. Scattered throughout the surviving confessions, are references to the different methods of torture that were used to break the prisoners and notebooks kept by the S21 interrogators record the instructions they received on the systematic use of torture at this prison. No one can credibly deny that this crime took place. And the torture used at S21 was not trifling or minor. It was severe beatings that left wounds, electric shocks administered until the point of unconsciousness, suffocation with plastic bags, pulling out finger and toenails. On Tuesday, uh, the civil parties played for you a part of the testimony of Chum Mei uh, that recounted the torture he suffered uh, during his interrogation at S21. During the 2009 trial, uh, Bu Meng uh, provided a description of his interrogation. Let me read part of that uh, to you. Quote, they had a bunch of sticks, and they dropped it on the floor 
and it made noise. And I was asked to choose which stick I preferred. Mum and I stood up and grabbed the stick and started to beat me. After he felt exhausted, another person came to take a turn to beat me up. He asked me to count the lashes, and when I counted up to ten lashes, he said, how come you count to ten? I only beat you for one lash. I felt so painful at the time. There were wounds, many wounds on my back and blood was on the floor. Every time they beat me up, they asked me questions. When did I join the CIA? Who introduced you into the CIA and what was their name? I did not know what the CIA or KGB was. How could I respond? So they just kept beating me up. Later in his interrogation, Bu Mang was given electric shocks near his genitals. The testimony of Bu Mang and Chum Mei is corroborated by reports written by S21 interrogators. And describing exactly how torture was used to force confessions. In E3-7437, a July 1978 report describing the interrogation of prisoner Suor King, the interrogator writes, quote, I told him to prostrate himself before the image of the two dogs. At first, he did not follow my command, but after some beating, he agreed to admit that he was a traitor, yet he did not tell me about his traitorous networks. I then electrocuted him several times, and I talked about politics to confuse him. He then agreed to tell me about the CIA network. Uh, in his trial in 2009, Your Honours, a doik described how one prisoner uh, had died while being suffocated by a plastic bag, and he remembered uh, the name of that prisoner, Ping Kim Si. The rather remarkable uh, memory for detail uh, of the former S-21 chairman um, was confirmed by one of the documents uh, your honors obtained just last year, uh, put on the case file at that time, uh, and it is the document you will see here, uh, the S-21 daily control list for 7 May 1977. E399-69, which contains a handwritten note at the bottom of the page. Ping Kim Si, doctor from Northwest Zone, died on account of torture and syncope in an interrogation place. And I'm not a medical <laughs> person, and I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that name correctly, uh, but the disease that's referenced there is a loss of consciousness uh, that results from insufficient blood flow to the brain, uh, consistent with Doik's 2009 testimony that this prisoner died from being suffocated. So we see in this document, Your Honors, not only confirmation of uh, the brutal and violent nature of the torture, but you should also take note uh, of the corroboration uh, and the confirmation of the memory of Doik. Uh, this is a witness whose memory of details can be relied upon. And you've seen uh, this document before. 
but I would be remiss not to take, take you through it uh, one more time. It is the July 1977 report describing the interrogation of uh, Sector Secretary K. Kim Quote, on the afternoon of 21 July 1977, we pounded him another round, electrical wire and shit. This time, he cursed those who hit him very much and said, go ahead and beat me to death. Had him eat two or three spoonfuls of shit. By nightfall, we went at him again with the electric wires, this time pretty seriously. He became delirious. Later, he confessed a bit as reported above. He concludes, my operative line is to continue to torture with mastery because the enemy is breaking emotionally and is at a dead end. What, what is most frightening, Your Honors, is that this turned out to be just the beginning of K. Kim Hoot's interrogation at S21, an interrogation that continued another nine and a half months until he was finally executed in May of 1978. And one more source of evidence, important source, uh, that confirms the systematic use of torture at S21 are the contemporaneous notebooks of the interrogators uh, that record the instructions and training they received. E3-8368 is one of those notebooks, uh, and the instructions recorded in it could not be any more blunt or clear. I quote, the enemy does not confess to us easily. When they confess when we do politics, they confess at the very lowest level. Torture cannot be avoided. It only differs as to whether it is, it is a little or a lot. That's all. The objective of torturing is to get their answers. It is not done for fun. Therefore, we must make them feel pain so that they will respond quickly. At Krang to Chan, you heard testimony uh, from numerous witnesses, both guards and former prisoners, uh, that interrogations were conducted in an open uh, structure uh, close to the guards' kitchen, uh, which contained chains, clubs, whips, axes, and pliers and from which the cries of pain of prisoners being interrogated were often heard. In the words of Mia Soka, the building was filled with screams. The use of torture was admitted by two of the Grand Kachan cadres who testified in this trial, Sok Sang and Van Sun. Guard Sot Sang admitted that when prisoners were interrogated, quote, they were beaten up and plastic bags were tied around their face. And Big, Big Deutsch, uh, the former member of the Krang Tachan Committee and the chairman of the youth in Tramcock District, uh, admitted in his OCI OCIJ interview before his death that he participated in interrogations and that if the prisoners did not confess, they tortured them. You heard uh, from former prisoner 
the female medic born Sarun, how she was working one day next to the interrogation room, and she heard in detail the questioning of a new person from Phnom Penh, which she described as follows, I quote, I heard the sound of whipping. They asked the question again whether he had held the rank of a captain, and he said no, and the same process kept repeating. The man was actually beaten almost to death before he finally confessed that he had been a captain in order to have the beating stop. Vorn Sarun also described the sores she saw and touched uh, that were all over the body of her friend uh, when she returned to the prison cell after her interrogation. And importantly, Your Honor, the testimony of these witnesses is corroborated by surviving records from Tramcock and Prankachan which openly discuss the use of hot and cold methods of interrogation. This is a 26 December 1977 report from Prank Dachan prisoner, prison chief on describing the interrogation of a female prisoner. I quote, when our comrade in the army interrogated her, she kept crying and her face became black, which was her pretense. Therefore, according to my examination, only with hot interrogation would she confess. Within the army workplace at Hang Tassam, there are no confidential places to conduct interrogation at ease. Therefore, it is submitted to the party for information. Whatever the party decides, I look forward to executing the decision. And in this uh, next document from Trapping Tom Tabung Commune uh, regarding the confession of a prisoner, Mung Sun, uh, the commune reported, quote, we have conducted some cold and hot methods of interrogation against Mung Sun. He confessed they had been appointed by Contemptible Hong since November 1976. Your Honor, I think the references in these documents to hot and cold methods of interrogation is quite significant. Um, we see uh, that in the CPK's model district, uh, torture was systematically used uh, in virtually the similar manner, the identical manner uh, to that that we see at S21. At Phnom Krau, uh, you heard a former Division 920 soldier, Sun Vut, uh, testified that during his interrogation, uh, which lasted several months, he was shocked with electric cables, beaten with clubs to the point of unconsciousness, and told that if he did not confess, they would beat him to death. At Okan Sang, it was admitted by the prison chief and deputy that torture was used when needed to get prisoners to confess. And like S21, uh, one of the methods of torture was to administer electric shocks uh, using the power from telephones. Your Honours, uh, the evidence approves not only that the use of torture at security offices was widespread and systematic, uh, it also proves uh, that this was widely known from the commune chiefs of Tramcock to the top leadership of the party, including the accused. One of the methods of torture used at S21, the use of plastic bags to suffocate prisoners, was instructed to doik 
by Vorn Bet. Then the chairman uh, of the special zone, and later a member of the CPK standing committee. Uh, as testified by Doik, Vorn Bet instructed him on how to torture prisoners by this method and told him after covering their head with a bag, quote, you comrade need to look at the neck or rather the pulse at the neck. If it was vibrating very strongly, they would be considered as spies. During this trial, you also heard testimony from Doig about the interrogation or confession summaries that were prepared for the CPK leaders uh, and routinely sent by Doig, uh, first to Son Sen and later Nguyen Chia. Annotations uh, on the confessions uh, show how these documents were then distributed to zone, division, and ministry leaders throughout the country. Uh, and in the confession summaries that were sent to the leaders, there are frequent references describing the use of torture to obtain the prisoner's confession. Here is but one example uh, the S21 confession of Noom Sin. Uh, which bears an annotation on the cover page that the document was provided to Brother Noon Nunchea. And a few pages later in the document, the summary report written by the interrogator states, I quote, I tortured him until he confessed that he worked as a spy and a CIA network. Confirming his knowledge uh, that torture was used to obtain confessions from prisoners, Noon Che had told Tet Sambat in one of his interviews, quote, they normally confessed when they were beaten painfully and seriously tortured. And in a January 2004 interview with Lamont, Kusum Pan admitted to the reporter interviewing him that, I quote, there was indeed a state institution in which systematic crime, torture, extermination were state policy. The document reference, um, Your Honors, for that interview, E3-4603. Uh, Let me now uh, turn to the crime of murder and extermination. Once again, your honors, the evidence before you proves uh, that killings at these security offices uh, were conducted on a massive scale. The evidence of those killings is beyond any dispute. At Okansang, Okansang, the prison chief, the deputy chief, and the surviving prisoners all testified to a mass execution of between 100 and 200 of dry people from Vietnam that took place at the security office. Uh, the prison chief and deputy also testified that the order to execute those prisoners uh, was communicated to them uh, by Division 801 Secretary Saroon, but had come to Saroon um, through the Northeast Zone Secretary. And the reason that is significant, Your Honors, uh, is because in this telegram uh, dated the 15th of June 1977, it was not the Division 801 Secretary, but the Northeast Zone Secretary, who reported to the party center that Division 801 had captured 209 dry ethnics uh, who had crossed the border. And it was the Northeast Zone Secretary uh, who sought instructions on how to proceed. 
And like most of these telegrams uh, to Phnom Penh, uh, this telegram was copied uh, to Uncle Nun and Chef, Office 870, and the Center Archives. When prison uh, chairman uh, Chom Say uh, was shown this document on the 8th of April 2013. He confirmed that this was the same group, uh, though he testified that, uh, to his recollection, only 100 of the dry prisoners had been brought for execution uh, to uh, what is clear here, though, Your Honors, what is beyond any question agreed to by uh, all the witnesses is that a mass a killing of these dry people took place and that this matter was one reported 